This is a five minute clinic on figured base. Basic concepts. The numbers underneath a base note indicate notes that are supposed to be filled in above that given base. Those notes are counted as intervals above the base note. If they're not otherwise altered, use the version of that note that the key signature indicates. Certain numbers are understood or left out, but they're still part of the chord. Let's look at some examples. Here in G minor, on the first chord, we leave out the 5 and the 3 and we assume root position. So that means that in addition to the A over here, that we're expecting a third and a fifth above the base. That is to say, we're expecting a C, and we're expecting an E flat. If this is in four voices, we also assume an octave doubling, but that's not always absolutely necessary. Sometimes you may double other notes. Notice, by the way, that we're talking about a C natural and an E flat because those are the versions that the key signature gives us. In the next example, the first inversion chord, the 6-3 chord, we can leave out the 3 and just write the 6. But here in this case, there's a sharp next to the 6. That means we count above the A and we get F, but the sharp means take whatever version that is and make that sharp. Since we assume a third above the base, we can put in the C, and whatever doubling is appropriate. Notice that that means the same thing as putting a slash through the 6. The slash through a number means raise that interval above the base. In the last example, the 6-4, we want to put a fourth above the base, G, and a sixth above the base, B flat. It's important to note that the order in which the upper notes appear could be whatever you need at the time. They don't have to appear with the sixth higher than the fourth. In other words, I could have written a version of this in which the G appears here, or let's say, um, actually, the B flat could appear here and the G appear there and the D up there. So I could put them in whatever order I'd like, as long as the 6 and the 4 are present somewhere. Those are the things that I've just explained here. And the other detail is that an accidental, accidental all by itself means to apply that alteration to the third above the base. So if you just see a sharp without a number, that means sharp 3. There are a few other little details that I want to show you. For seventh chords, notice that in this case, the three and the five are understood, so we put in a B and a D, and the seventh above a G sharp is an F sharp. In this particular case, that makes a half diminished seventh chord. If I wanted a fully diminished 7th chord, I'd have to put a natural next to the 7, in which case the 3 and the 5 are understood, but then I have an F natural and that makes a fully diminished 7th. Several of the other inversions of the 5-7, a 6-5, I'd expect an E there, that's a 6th above, a D, that's a fifth above, and we understand a third above, so I could put the B over there. Or on the 6-4-2 six, uh, six, chord, or 4-2 chord as we call it, I can put a B here, an E there, 
and a G sharp there. We understand the sixth above B. The four and the two are made explicit here in the figures. And finally, when we see a long line not connected to another number, it usually means the bass is moving, but keep the chord that you have in the upper voices. So in this case, we have room for a passing tone B flat in the bass going from A to C, but we don't change everything else. So when you see that B flat, you're not tempted to put a B flat chord over it. So the line means keep what you have, just move the bass. On the other hand, if we have a dash that connects two numbers, it means take the fourth above the bass, here it's F, and move it to a third above the bass in that voice. So here F goes to E, because that's a fourth above C, and then a third above C. That's our five-minute clinic on figured bass.